it, it was a quiet phone call. We, I tried to, I tried to lay pillows down for them when the Ivy League made the decision and all that. Like I didn't give anything away, but I let them know this might be happening, and it's different hearing that it's happening than it might be. So it was, they, they were quiet, but you know, what are you gonna do? I showed the emotion. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's so hard over Zoom to to get a real feel for that. But um, yeah, it was a lot of solemn faces that usually aren't. That usually aren't like that. Totally left it as that. Um, we we took it as you know. Okay, there's a shock, but in a lot of ways, it's. You don't have to be faster than the bear, you have to be faster than the other guy. And so what are we gonna do this fall to, all right, this is, this is what it is, we just have to be better than the other people at it. And let's take advantage of it. I'm a hopeful coach, so th this will go with um, my personality. We, we look at like failure as a chance to learn and um, I think we have a pretty resilient group and it's gonna be tough, but, um, this is what the world is. You know, it was, it was so different. Um, you know, even though uh, it was kind of practiced, we knew it was going to happen. Um, you know, but once we got word to tell the guys that, that, that we would not have a season, you know, we were on Zoom, and uh, not everybody puts their live picture up there. But there was, you know, some visual disappointment. You know, put the head down. Uh, you know, like something just something bad just happened. Right? Of the game. So don't leave your head down too long. Put your head up and you know, let's start moving forward as fast as possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, the first thing I would do, and what I've done already, is you just you pick up the time frame and you put it into, you know, instead of a uh, January to November, December, you're now going from September to April or May, whatever it ends up being. You know, you're still going to have a similar number of months. It's still going to be. We're still going to have to do all the same things that we've had to do in the past. We've got to get our training in. We got to continue to teach football and everything. Uh, so, um, so I, I think you know the, the difference would be when you get into the details of it. Um, and we were talking about it. If we do have camp in February, um, I'll have to dress different in February camp or even a March camp than I would if we were going out in three weeks. So, so the camp it will be a little bit different. Um, we'll finish in better weather and start in poorer weather. But you know, I think it's no different than when you when you're playing an opponent. Like once the game starts, that opponent you're playing against, you don't even think who it is anymore. You're just focused on the game. Once we get into preseason, camp season, we'll forget that it's April. And we'll just be focused on it's game one, game three, game five. So that's probably the biggest challenge because they, we've already gone, you know, from March to this point where we did some things, you know, uh, virtually. Uh, they were able to do some things working out, uh, but now it, it, it's not for naught. You know, they, they're so better for it. But now you got to string it for a little bit longer period of time. Uh, and so with that is that mental aspect, staying focused, okay, keeping them, you know, we can't be game ready and season ready in October and November, okay, but we got to be preparation ready to get ourselves better and, you know, strength ready and everything. I do believe for some of our guys, um, I know as a fact they've not been able to get into the weight room at all based on where they live. And now all of a sudden, you know, they do have a chance to, build strength to get ready for the season you know so that's kind of an unlying positive so there, there are going to be positives when we're when we get through this well we've done um, our, our administration's done a great job athletic administration we've uh, we've done some uh, Thursday night talks uh, that they put together dealing with so many other issues uh, social justice racial equity kind of getting our guys involved uh, and trying to get them to think about you know, those 
those issues which are, you know, extremely important. Um, and we need to, you know, one of the things we need to continue to do do that and, you know, and, and make a difference where we can, even though we may not be able to do something at a game in September uh, to help awareness, bring awareness to people. There's other things that we'll be able to do. Um, you know, I think most of the coaches as we've met, uh, you know, we'll start with, you know, a different topic other than football. We've brought in speakers to talk to our guys, to talk about um, other, you know, other issues. And again, not the X's and O's, but and that has really helped a lot. Uh, some of our alums that coach, you know, at major colleges, NFL, uh, you know, but it, it, they could be high school coaches. They have great ideas, and, and I think that's important that we all start reaching out to each other and learn from each other. I mean, it's very important. You, you, you don't want to get shortchanged on any of the games uh, because the fun is in playing the games. So I think, uh, you know, the uh, I would the NC2A has done a great job. Uh, I can I think helping the student athletes get that last season of eligibility in because you know, the spring was so crazy. At least right now, there's a little bit of a background and a blueprint of what's happened in the past. We're moving forward, I think decisions can come faster. Um, so, but, but I also think it's important that uh, you know we're talking about games up on the field here and not having fans. Will we have fans? You know, the beauty of our game, and I'll say our game, but Division Two football and Mercer's, it is very much a family atmosphere and a close deal. It's not about really not about the number of fans that are in the stands, it's about our families being in the stands. And as I thought about our players playing out there and, and when they come off the field, they're not going to go see their parents right after, or their families right after the game. Um, I was like, that, that's difficult, you know, so we get everything straightened out, we play again in the spring, and the parents and the families are part of their son's season, whether it be final season or any other season. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. Um, you know, we're here for our student athletes and right now we can't see them. We can't, we can't have them come back and, and compete in their sports. Um, it makes it really challenging to, to give them the experience that they deserve and, and have our coaches and our staff deliver that message, you know, last night and into today. And, you know, that message will obviously be ongoing. Um, it's hard it's un and it's unprecedented. Um, and, and we have to refocus our student athletes on what we do now. And a lot of that is about staying safe and making smart decisions when you come back to campus in the fall because your best bet of playing in the spring is being smart in the fall. Yeah, it, the workload's been heavy. Um, you know, a real compliment to our conference office um, and the athletic directors in it. I, I think the, PSA, the PSAC is ahead of most Division II conferences in what we're doing. Um, you know, we had developed a comprehensive resocialization plan to start fall on time. Um, we had planned to have our student athletes start voluntarily coming back in a couple weeks. So we had a full plan ready to go and Mercy Harris was really supportive of having athletics be sort of that, that first test on our campus to have our students be safe. Um, and then it just reached a point where we all realized that it just wasn't going to work. Uh, we, we, we couldn't have them come back and it didn't make sense to try to delay the start of sports for a couple weeks because we just we weren't going to be able to get it in at the end of the day. Um, and then you just had to reshape your mindset about, okay, well, how can we still play at some point? We, we owe that to our student athletes at the end of the day that they can play their sport, whether it's in the fall, the winter, or the spring. We'll figure that out um, and, and we'll make it work as a staff. And that was one of the big conversations that athletic directors and presidents had. We're all going to have facility challenges and, and, and a lot of logistical nightmares, um, but we owe it to our student athletes to make it work. They've been great, um, disappointed, but they understand. You know, and, and, and that's all I can ask for everybody. They, they understand what's going on right now. Um, you know, we have some really, really talented student athletes in the classroom um, and obviously on the field. And, and they understand the climate of, of what's going on across our country right now. Um, and, and while they're disappointed, they realize that it's probably not anyone's best interest to try to play right now. Um, and now it's on us to figure out how to make fall competitive on some level, whether that's small group practices, it's, it's teams, it's, it's finding competition because our student athletes are they're competitive in nature. Um, and, and we need to find a way that they can use that that part of their lives. Yeah, there'll be challenges, um, but we're probably better positioned than others um, in, in some of that. And, and we still have to flush it out. You know, as a conference, we'll start talking. I think Monday we start meeting again as athletic directors about what the spring could look like. Um, and, and some of that, you know, we're talking about maybe football plays on Sundays. Um, do some sports start earlier than others? Can we play volleyball at the same time as basketball? 
um, and just flip the home and away parts of the schedule. So we'll start working some of that through. Um, you know, with Mercyhurst having 25 sports, that's the most in our conference. So we have some other challenges. You know, sports like water polo might be a challenge with, with pool time. Um, we have to figure out Division One hockey still. You know, and, and the conference hasn't made any decisions yet on what we're going to do. But I think we're getting to where we know what hockey might look like. So there's a lot of challenges, but our staff's prepared for it, and we'll take them one at a time and, and make the best possible decisions we can. Thanks. Yeah, the whole thing's challenging because even even if the conference makes a schedule that that takes all the sports into account properly and allows it to space out, they're not going to take into account men's lacrosse, which is in the GMAC. You know, it's not going to take into account what we're doing with hockey and how late that goes. Um, so there are going to be challenges, and you know, it, you don't want to sort of put off those challenges for a little bit. But first, we have to figure out what fall looks like as well, and what can our student athletes do when they get here, um, because we want them to be able to train and we want them to be able to practice, and we have to figure out how we do that as safely as we can. And then we'll figure out those other challenges, because like I said, we owe it to them to, to do that. It's possible. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at any option we can so that we can get in the, the events that we need to get in and, and give our student athletes their opportunities. Um, you know, we've used a lot of indoor facilities in the winter already, so um, typically for spring sports, and, and that just now extends that, you know, maybe football, soccer, and field hockey need those times as well. So um, we'll figure all that out, but I, I think at the same time, it's too premature to have those conversations, just not knowing even what high school sports are going to look like in Erie right now.